Uh, good evening and welcome to the uh, Monday, July 25th meeting of the Pembroke Board of Selectmen. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have uh, one announcement, but I'll waive that for now. Uh, we have the chairman of the Pembroke Planning Board here to discuss an issue. Dan, you want to sure. come to the podium? Uh, yes, as the uh, head of the department of the planning board, I'm requesting that the selectmen vote to uh, go to a step three. Base wage rate of twenty three fifty six an hour for our candidate Matthew Hines for planning board assistant. Um, as you can see in your packets, there should be his resume. Uh, he's got a doctorate. He's, he's got a PhD. Um, he has a lot of experience in planning. And we think that he would be an excellent candidate, um, not only clerically but also to to update our master plan, which is about 14 years out of date, um, as well as take a look at some of the areas in town that might be getting a little uh, debt. Okay, well, uh, I've read myself the, uh, the information that you have referenced, and first of all, I'm very happy to hear you. You've got a candidate that the planning board is really happy about, and uh, uh, I personally don't have an issue with it. I know you've advertised the job and the salary that you are looking for is included in that. So uh, we're covered under our union agreement. So uh, does the board have any questions or issues for Dan? I think Dan's got outstanding judgment and has proven that over the years. So if he thinks it's important to make that uh, move to uh, bring in a good um, and talented person, I think that we should go along with it. Very good. Anybody else have any comments? Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion for this, please. I move approval of the Board of Selectmen acting as the Wage and Personnel Board. Is there a second? Second. Second by Matthew, uh, motion by APA. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Four to zero. Thank you very much. Hey, Dan, good luck. Right, good night. I'd just like to mention that uh, Selectman Trabuco is attending another meeting, and uh, he'll be here as soon as possible. Um, I did have one announcement that I'd like to do before we uh, go to the next item. Uh, the Board of Selectmen received a letter from Comcast which will be forwarded to all of the people that uh, have the Comcast services, and it concerns upgrading your uh, set-top boxes, as they call it. So um, they're just letting the selectmen know that uh, certain people may need to upgrade their boxes, and I believe this is a no charge, uh, but you need to contact Comcast. So. Look in the mail and you'll be getting a copy of this. It gives you all the instructions on what to do. Thank you. Uh, we have the DPW department here to talk to us tonight about uh, storage of earth, earth removal material. So, Scott Glovin. Good evening. Good evening. I'm here on behalf of the DPW. Um, as you know, we have a high school project going on, the drainage project that we have um, um, taken over by the school. And there's probably going to be a surplus of about 4,000 yards of material. It's clean gravel. Um, there's no junk in it. And we had a DPW commission meeting Monday, last Monday night, and the DPW commissioners feel we should, uh, if we can, store the gravel for upcoming projects we have. And we're basically looking to store it in the grocery pit. Anybody have any questions for Scott about this issue? Just have one. 
it won't um, by blowing dust and that kind of thing it won't impact the houses around it. It's it's so overgrown down in the pit right now because we haven't trimmed it in so many years. <coughs> the dust should be an issue for okay. the, the development on the back side of it. I'd like to ask about the uh, the number of trucks and the days of the week. It, it's from what we can gather. Um, right now they're on seven trucks a day trying to get 65 loads out of there. They've been hauling it to Hanson. Um, that project is going to get shut down over there. I guess they're, they're at their rate of what they need to fulfill. Uh, I spoke to the gentleman today. He figures four to five trucks a day, possibly 50 to 60 loads. The route would be coming out of Learning Lane, taking a right on Hobbamock, taking a left on Monroe, right through there. And what kind of day would these trucks be running? They usually start hauling around 7 o'clock in the morning. Seven to three. And the, the goal is to get this project done before we start. How much stuff are you guys excavating? There's, there's, there's about 7,000 yards of material coming out of there, but fortunately, it's really good material. And and with the roadway projects, and we've got some cemetery projects and, and, and the like, we, we were talking the other night. Um, um, Mr. Stone came to our meeting as well, and we were all talking, and it just it just makes sense to try to capture some of this stuff because we're going to go out and buy it, and and it, it's a hundred or hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of material, so it won't sit in Monroe Street long, and it and it, you know it won't it won't collect dirt or weeds because we plan on moving it right out. We've already got a cemetery project that that will take a uh, thousand yards, so. Is this off the retention basin? Yeah. 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 It's a big void. It? But it's good material up there. Yeah, you get a chance when you take a mm -hmm. swing up there, but they're about a third of the way through the project, and it's the basin's huge up there now. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, before, it, it took it took a lot of water, the old basin mm -hmm. did, and, and because it wasn't big enough, I mean, the blowouts yeah. downstream were, were big. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, we'd like to be able to, it'll, it shouldn't be more than nine months and all the material will be gone. So you're going to store the rest of the material there? We'd like to store it there and then use it. We plan on using, okay. we're going to dig going into to it right away. It's not that it's going to sit there. If you needed more one, we should look for another place. So, yeah. I agree with you. On it. No, we, 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 this is one of the things we're working on is to try to find storage areas for when we have projects like this because there's there's a lot of good material comes out of oh, these things sense. and, and sense you know we can save some money now just to recap this again it'll be monday through friday 7 a.m to 3 p.m yep. and uh i lost I track of how many trucks a day they're, it, hopefully with the shorter run, they're going to not run as many trucks, but they're still looking to move anywhere from 50 to 60 truckloads a day to keep the project yeah. on, on, you know, on schedule. And they, may, and they may end up running a Saturday. The Saturdays are definitely, right now they're working Saturdays. And it's kind of tough to live with them because we gave a timeline on the project. Yeah, we're trying to, we want to get out of there before school starts. We want to get it done. So. So we're, we should be looking at Monday through Saturday. Hopefully they don't need it, but we, we need to leave that option open to them. Okay. Anybody have so, any other questions? No, I'm just going to say so moved, uh, Mr. Chairman, we moved uh, as, as a recommendation. Yes. Motion. I have, I have one final question. Oh, sorry, Matthew. Yeah. Would it be possible to do the runs 8 to 4 instead of 7 to 3 as you know, to start the morning commute? It, it's tough because the contract, most contractors, they'd like to start at 6 o'clock in the morning. We sort of off by stock at seven, especially in the summertime because it's hot. They they try to get out at the tail end of the day. If they can work six to two, they'd rather. Yeah, but that's that's early for running for running the road. You know, residential neighborhoods. Um. And the other thing is, uh, so I can, we can also put our truck on there as well. So. You know, it may be it may be seven trucks, it may be eight trucks, but whatever we need to do to get it done before the kids go back to school is, is the the more important. 
aspect of this. And the material has to go out one way or another. So that's kind of the that's kind of the, the tail end of it. The material's got to go someplace in order for the project to be completed, and and getting it done before school is more important. So the first four thousand yards to pick a number, that's going to go right to Monroe Street. The first the first yards are already gone. We're going to take whatever's left now. So okay. it'll be the last four thousand yards. Oh, the last. 4, yes. Yeah. Yes, because they they had a project that they were feeding. Right. And it, and now that project is full. We want to gather the, the rest of the material. So this is the, the end of it. And when do you anticipate using this new road to the Monroe Street pit? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, what is the route that the trucks take where they've been taking it before? They've been hauling to Hanson, so they, they split it up. Half were running up Hobmock to Lake to 27 and out that way, and the other half were running down towards Mattakesa Street and out that way, so they all weren't going on one route. But like I said, that project got pretty much built up today. So whatever we give them to get to Monroe Street, that's what they're going to have to do. And he does have another project in town that he already talked to somebody about taking some pills to. I just don't know the total left until yet. Yeah. That was agreed upon before the commissioners decided they'd like to send it to I'd, li I'd just like to ask Ed, uh, do we need to uh, notify the people on Monroe Street that this is going to start? Well, we could. I, mean, I don't think the, you're obligated you know, legally too, but if you'd like to, we can have it. Then give that some more thought. Our, our biggest goal is not to slow them down because we gave them a timeline they had to be done by. So if we're going to take the material, we have to give them a route as soon as possible to get the stuff. Well, I'm just thinking of Monroe Street and how it, how wide is it? How many houses are on yeah. that street? Pretty wide. Dan? Yeah. Uh, so this pit has been used many times in the past. It's been used many times it's been in the past. Full, it's, it's been it's full been. for a long time, and, and, and it's then we emptied it. Out and we emptied it. So this, this pit is uh, it's town-owned property. It's town-owned property. It's been, it's been used for this historically. You know, we, we don't want to intrude on the neighbors with a huge pile for a length well, of time, but if it's the between reason, now and September, it's not going to be there a long time. The right. reason we had problems before was we were doing the grinding operation, and, and that's what the neighbors got upset about. There's no grinding. This is strictly drop it, push it up into a pile, and as soon as we're ready, we're going to move it. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, we have a motion from Bill. Is there a second? Second. Second by Arthur. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate uh, it. I hope we're going to save some money. <coughs> and I hope Good we deal. answered your questions, too, you from did. the other night. Yes. Well, for some reason, the route changes. We'll update that one. Oh, thank you. Very okay. good. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we've got a few moments before we go to schedule appointments. Um, well... Why don't we go to a review of the data from 2016 concerning the posting of minutes and agendas on the town's website. Um, I put together uh, a little study that I did because as you remember, yeah, we, we would like to have the minutes of committees and board meetings posted on our website for transparency with the public and also the Board of Selectmen uh, not being able to attend all of these boards and committees. Uh, we can go on the website and uh, check on some projects that might be going on uh, just to find out what is going on with these other boards and committees. So uh, you have in front of you a list of the boards and committees as they appear on the website. And the number of agendas posted by each and a total of 189 agendas. 
Also, next to the agendas is a list of the minutes that are posted, and the total of the minutes is 79. So, as you can see, uh, we're doing a good job posting agendas, and we're not doing as good a job posting minutes. So, as the board knows, um, we, we are going along with the rules of the open meeting law, which states just that, that they should be posted. And we also have passed out a handbook for people that are on committees, and in that handbook it tells them exactly what to do, which is the same as the open meeting law. And we also passed a bylaw in April of last year, uh, which makes the posting of the agendas and the meetings uh, a bylaw of the town. So my purpose in doing this is not to single out anybody. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I just wanted to see how we're doing and uh, I'm not happy with how we're doing. So I would, uh, I would like to take some action on this. Uh, perhaps one suggestion would be that the uh, board send a letter to the chairman of the committees and the boards and uh, bring this to their attention and uh, see if we can get a big improvement on this. Because it's something, it isn't just something that we want to do, it's something that we have to do. So I would, uh, I would uh, probably uh, like to ask Ed about maybe drafting a letter that we can work on. I'll be glad to work on it with you if the, if the board agrees that that's an action that they would like to take. Uh, yes. The minutes that you see, are these just were posted on the website? Or yes. You, uh, how many have you done a separate track to see how many minutes were posted uh, at, by per state law? No, all I've done is looked at the website, what is posted on the website, and that's what's reflected. Right, but you, you, you do understand that uh, if it's not on the website, it could, it could still have been filed with the town clerk. Well, that, that's all in the same procedure. How they get posted is another matter. No, the, the, I think, well, maybe Sabrina can help us out on this one, but I think that Deb Wall, as the, uh, the library director, is also the administrator of the town website. Right. Um, I think she's contacted to post them on the website. So it, it could be, and I'm asking. It could so be she that, isn't sitting on any. It could be the case that the, the minutes were generated. We did and identify that. Mr. Stone did identify one board who's doing it that way. You'll notice that there's one that's asterisk on the list. That board was filing with the town clerk. Everyone else has been sending them over to be posted by the dev wall and myself. But one of the things we're not doing ourselves any favor with is you notice how, for example, we have more agendas than minutes. Every time there's an amended agenda that appears as a separate item. Mm -hmm. So for the same meeting, there could be two or three agendas. Correct. So that can lend itself to a bit of the discrepancy as a small percentage of the total. And you're right. <clears throat> what the uh, what that is, I don't know. Uh, I I don't think it's going to change uh, what we have in front of us. Yes, and I, I do know of one that, that I happen to be a member of government study. It shows one agenda and no minutes. That's because we did not have a quorum, so therefore there was no meeting. Right. There's some really legitimate reasons for some of the absolutely normal results, and then there's a few that the letter might be appropriate if the board of and chose to go that way. Yeah. And, and I don't believe the bylaw has any mechanism or punishment, if that's the word. There's no teeth in the bylaw. Well, if somebody were to report to the Attorney General's office that a certain department that they were interested in is not posting any minutes, that, that may give us a problem. Well, that, that's a big issue. 
if, if they're not on the website, it's a violation of the town bylaw. Yep. If they're not, if they're not filed with the town clerk, then that's a state violation. Yeah, and also they have to uh, the minutes have to be approved by the members. So if they meet, if they meet one month, and they don't meet for a couple of months. And then the next meeting, they don't have a quorum. Then. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I think we should uh, just send a, a note, um, you know, <coughs> form or whatever, to each one of the uh, chairmen on these committees and just advise them that um, what, what we have for uh, statistics here, and we want it taken care of as soon as possible. Well, we sometimes get some criticism on transparency issues. And that's not my purpose in this. My purpose in this is really a selfish one, that if the Board of Selectmen wants to find out what's going on with a certain board, and because we all meet on the same night, the only way I can do it was have access to their minutes. And it, it's, not, it's not happening. So you couple that with the open meeting law, uh, I think it's worth sending out a reminder. Why did we why did we create a handbook and have all this information in it which covers the agendas and the meetings and the postings and supposedly we give it to everybody. If they're not gonna do it, we got a we got a problem. Well for for all the reasons that you said Sending a letter would be certainly appropriate. And I just want to remind uh, this board, you know, really the, the chairman of, of these other boards and committees that the state does, when they get a complaint, they look into it fully, uh, just a, a town or two away, a small subcommittee of capital building spending committee. So they're looking into money to fix the buildings in town and they went back a couple of years without without minutes being posted, and the, the attorney general came down on them, yeah, pretty harshly. And by harshly, I mean they told them to write the minutes or else. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know we should have a secretary appointed in all these boards and commissions, unless they have one that they're allowed to hire. But nevertheless, there's a mechanism there to have a person responsible for doing it. I've done it myself. It's not an easy job being responsible for the minutes of meetings. And, uh, but it has to be done. And we've got volunteers that are willing to help us. Uh, and so I think it's a simple matter of just maybe reminding everybody so any other discussions on that issue make a motion that we uh, send the letter at your request motion by bill is there a second 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 by Arthur. all in favor aye, aye. opposed thank you that's unanimous um the last time we met we had a gentleman who wanted a door-to-door -door solicitation permit and we had some discussion about it and thought that we may want to review and look at the current policy that we have in place um, so we have that on the agenda is uh, anybody have any comment they would like to make I do well. Bill um, I don't particularly like door-to-door -door, uh, sales, um, but I would be willing to um, to make a uh, some type of an amendment to the policy that would um, um, allow a person to call the police station because all of the final approvals of everything goes through the police chief anyway. Um, by him to compile a list of, of uh, people that don't want people soliciting their house. Um, and when the, if the, when and if the person gets a permit to solicit, that 
that list be given given to them and saying that uh, not to solicit these particular locations. So I myself don't like it, so I would call the chief and give him my name and address and just say that I want to get added to that list. Um, I believe there's been some discussion with the police chief about it in the past, and um, uh, we're hoping something like that could work. Uh, I know you had mentioned one time about putting a, a sign on your lawn that no soliciting. Um, but if the chief's given out the permit um, on the final end of it after our approval, if we can contact him and uh, and let him know that that we don't want that, um, and I think that that would be a good idea. Um, if there's a vote by the board that would allow somebody to do that solicitation, then uh, by all means let them do it. If it's if it's um, a majority of the members that are here want somebody to go out and solicit. I just don't particularly want it at my house. So if there was some way we could uh, make a change to that policy to add that, I would be in favor of that. If that's a motion, Bill, I'll second it. Yes, I'll make it a motion. Oh, we have a motion by Bill and seconded by Dan. Any discussion? Mr. Fawn. Um, in having several discussions with the police chief, uh, we recommend that the town adopt a bylaw, like a lot of communities do, that would give, give the police department the teeth that they need to have to enforce door-to-door -door solicitation. In other words, uh, conduct the uh, appropriate background checks um, to be involved in the fingerprinting situation which they are capable of doing and can charge the solicitors for that uh, that uh, privilege and that uh, any violation of hours of operation uh, or any uh, violation of any background checks or uh, violation of the non-solicitation list that Mr. Falter had suggested we have uh, would constitute uh, a violation of the bylaw and therefore uh, give the police department some teeth and enforcement. We have the fall town meeting coming up. That's so right. Maybe we could uh, get that for the fall town meeting and in the meantime maybe uh, we could just advise the chief of that. Maybe he could start the process of doing it. Well we could um, we could adopt a policy, have you guys adopt a policy that will mirror the uh, uh, proposed bylaw. It'll just be a policy of the board, but at least it'll give us a head start on what we do, and then at the town meeting, then it becomes a bylaw and it gives the police department some teeth. So, is that meet with your sure. your yeah, motion? I think that would be fine. Sure. Dan, you second it. That's okay. Any other comments? I have a comment, Chair. Yes. I believe there should be a level of uh, Kind of practice upon the policy. First time offense by, say, a high schooler going door to door to solicit lawn lawn services should not be prosecuted by the police under this law, but otherwise, they do agree to this. Well, you guys get a chance to look at that, you know, about the uh, the penalties, whether they're too lenient, too harsh, whatever. That would be part of the, the board's review of the proposed policy. Okay. All in favor of Bill's motion? Do I have a question? Oh, first. sorry. Yeah. Um, are we um, granting Mr. Diamond his uh, request as part of this motion? This would make it the half before you. He just didn't want to come in until the policy was enacted. Okay, because I mean, I, I see this as something we should pick one at a time, you know, and uh, act on them as we feel is in the town's best interest, but, you know, it, it seems a lot to ask the chief of police to be involved in a non-solicitation list and that kind of thing, but if he's willing to do it, I'm willing to compromise and go along with it. Um, but I would like to see Mr. Diamond uh, be granted his permit as well. Uh, Sabrina, you said he's planning on coming in to our next meeting? I wanted to have the opportunity to discuss the policy that you had mentioned at the last meeting, and that he was prepared to come in your next meeting 
with this reconsideration request? Well, we're meeting Monday potentially out of order. Um, he's going to be, uh, be he's on, but currently he's working in Marshfield, so he's not even ready to be here. It doesn't okay. impact his business model at all to wait until we end. Okay. Is that okay, Arthur? Yeah, thanks. Okay, so uh, we'll go to the motion. All those in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, that's unanimous. Thank you. It's uh, 7.30, and we have a meeting with the advisory committee. Our, they are not here. So um, why don't we go to another the resignation of, Frank of our Delgamon. action items? Yes. Thank you, Bill. Do you want to take that one, please? Uh, we have on our agenda a letter of resignation from uh, Frank Baldessini, Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals. If I may, he says, although I thoroughly enjoy volunteering for our town and community, this letter is to inform you that I am stepping down from my position on the Zoning Board of Appeals effective July 29, 2016, as I will be moving from Pembroke. So moved to... Uh, Move to accept the resignation by Bill. A second? A second it with Se regret. Um, Frank has been an outstanding member. He's been the uh, legal conscience of the board for years. And um, if we had a way to turn this down and not let him move out of town, I would say that we should do it. But um, given that we have no choice, we should just wish him well because he treated the town very well. Right, I agree with you, Arthur, on that very much. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that's uh, unanimous. And we certainly wish Frank Baldessini well. Uh, we have a, a town accountant, Mr. Buckley, here. Did you have any business you wanted to bring up? Um, I don't, other than to tell you that you don't have any hearing Okay. Uh, so we're all set on that. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. That's great. Tax possession thing, we don't need to do that. What is that? Is that the. Uh, no, that was up here. With Mike oh, Buckley. Oh, yeah, he, he, didn't, he didn't have it. He didn't have it. Yeah, he said he could come to the Well, we have the uh, advisory board with us this evening. And uh, our agenda is calls for a discussion of. Uh, Financial concerns for the town. So, uh, would you like to take the podium, Mr. Chairman? Uh, by the way, this is not a podium. This is a lecture. A lecture. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, broadcast the name. Uh, so, what happened uh, on this? As we have been discussing uh, upstairs as the advisory committee, some of the things that go on in the, in the town of Denver, and realize that we have no clear cut. Um, understanding of some of the things that, that, that Tom was. So we thought it was a good idea if the advisory committee and the board of selectors would get together and have just sort of a general discussion. We don't have any axe to grind, if you will. Um, we just would like to know what some of the issues that we, as a financial advisory committee, have got to look forward to in the next few years. Uh, with that in mind, you know, we, we've talked about the Plymouth County Retirement, the OPPEP fund, the cost of health care, uh, the snow and ice deficit from last year that was half of the year before with 20% of the 40% of the snow, uh, the issues coming up with potential police and fire. What it boils down to is a big dollar and cents amount. And it's a consensus that we've got to do something because 
we just don't have that kind of money and I don't think we're going to be able to borrow that kind of money to everybody. So we've got to look for everybody to uh, cooperate, I guess is the best word. Um, my big question at the moment would be, since we're an advisory committee, an appointed committee, and you folks are elected by the townspeople, therefore that makes you, as we refer to you as the godfathers, um, but you are responsible for the tolling that goes on in the town of Henry. What is the selectman's view, essentially, of the next five years for town of Henry? And has it been discussed at all? I mean, we used to have a five-year capital plan, which I don't think exists any longer, uh, or if it's been five years, um, to know what what we face, what the police department may want in the capital, or the fire department, or the DPW, or uh, the school system. Uh, what is your vision for the next five years? Well, I think we have uh, certainly have a lot of projects that we can uh, that we have talked about uh, purchasing of land for a potential new fire station is one. Uh, the police department needs to be renovated and maybe moved. Uh, there are a lot of issues, as you said. I don't believe we've ever sat down and uh, come up with a five-year plan. Should the board? I would, I would think you should. I vote. We had at one time, and it worked pretty effectively, and, and Mike was around for it. He might be one of the few that has been around as long as uh, Ed and I have. Uh, the uh, cash management committee uh, gave us uh, the opportunity to um, you know, take some direction as the year went on. It didn't give us any um, hint as to new revenues and that kind of thing. Um, one of the things that, and I'm speaking for myself as opposed to for the board, but um, I think we, we missed an opportunity the other night um, to have the medical marijuana facility uh, uh, come to town. It, it would be a neighbor kind of hidden in the industrial park, and uh, there's a chance of getting between 2 and 5% of the uh, revenue that is generated. Uh, from their facility, so I, I think we could have had an opportunity there. Um, as far as the land purchase goes at 14 and 53, there's also land across the street surrounding the uh, old fire station. Um, I would say we should look at that as a potential uh, leasing opportunity rather than selling it outright because it would create a, a financial stream, a revenue stream, as you say. Um, you know, for you know, time immemorial, if you go uh, for that long a period of time. But you know, there were um, banks or credit unions or law offices or you know even retail that um, you know would look at that and um, be quite enamored with the location. I would think. So I, I think you know we need to put some ideas together. I know Pat Chilcott of the school committee and Mike Trapiano uh, had mentioned the same thing, that we need to look for other revenue sources and... I, I don't, not so sure that, that, yes, we've got to look for, for revenue sources, <coughs> certainly that's, that's the biggest thing, but I think we have to be a little cognizant of what we, of what we have, like uh, some of the issues with the amount that we spent, as I say, last winter, but snow and ice, um, for instance, the health care that the town provides. Um, it's, it's, it's a time that some of the staff has to increase their percentage. You know, we've got everybody else does, the private sector is way ahead of the municipalities in, in doing that. Um, I don't know what we can do with the, with the county retirement and some of those things, but those are all expenses that have got to be seriously, seriously looked at because it's it's all well and good to say you know we we've got a parcel of land that someone perhaps wants to uh, put some put some revenue uh, into the town. 
I don't think that's going to be in the. I think we've got to. Essentially, I think we've got to tighten our belt somewhere along the line. And I, and I, as I said, these are things that are not up to the advisory committee to do. It's something that has to be started, I believe, by the board of selectmen as to philosophical issues. I think you'll probably find out that we're more reactive than than we are probably. planning, because. Uh, I can just remember for the last 10 years or 12 years or 15 years, everybody says the same thing. We have no money. We have no money. We, you know, there's no money to do anything. And and um, we look at a lot of good good projects. We try to do things. You hire engineers to go out and look at look at these things, and then the project falls apart, and you wasted all that money on engineering to look at a lot of these projects and stuff. Perhaps and, uh, we should prioritize over the course of five years what, what five-year things need to really be accomplished and stick to it. If it seems to be putting a fire station down on 53 and back and fine, that's, that's the commitment right now that, that we've got. I know, and then the I know, police. I know one thing that, that we talked about at one time there was, was an override for all the different departments because uh, the, the police is running on on, um, on shoestrings over there now. Sometimes they have midnight shift with one or two guys working on the street. And they had that when I was working 50 years ago. So they're way behind the times on that. The fire department looking for more guys. The DPW needs, know, you know, when you look at... a very slippery slope, as you know. Oh, I know that. Uh, no, I understand that. Nobody ever wants to talk about things you know. like that. But where else are we well, going to get the money? Okay, maybe maybe some of these things so, need to be put out to a town-wide um, I don't want to monopolize all of this. I know that the board's got some individual questions that you know they would like to address. Or but I would think decide. even part of the advisory committee, in my opinion anyway, would be you people are the profession, professional people that we hire to, to go in and look at things to say, advise us about what you think should happen. But and, very often we uh, aren't aware of it until we get a bill to pay for renovations or, or hear about it on town meeting floor. Right. Uh, yeah, you know. Right, we but we've done. worked on that over the years to try to get you all that information long before town meeting. So we've been we've been better in the last few years, I think, than, than we have in the past. But the purchase of the land at 53 and 14. Yeah, that was the last. We didn't hear a thing about a fire station there until town that, meeting floor. Well, that was because it was all in executive session. It wasn't because we were trying to hide anything. It was in executive session that we were negotiating with the people up there to come to a price. Well, so the advisory is going to advise. Yeah. They need to get involved in this before we get to town meeting full. I, I don't personally I don't know whether or not nothing to my knowledge would include portions of the advisory committee be included in, in an executive session of that nature just for information purposes only. Um, as I say, it was, it was a surprise to, to, to us. I'm not saying that, that it's a bad situation. No, I don't have a problem else. with having you in executive session you know. as long as the town's attorney says that that's legal and you can do that because. But you're the ones that have to know what's coming up to invite us to be part right. of it. And yep. that right now is sort of the weak link. So I guess. I guess some of the questions I had, you know, I've been on advisory for a couple of years, um, so it's kind of taking a lot in. Um, and the questions always really come down to who's setting the vision for the town. Um, and it's, when we talk about like having a five-year plan, like it's in the town bylaws, we're supposed to have a five-year plan, it's supposed to be kind of updated every year. So I guess the first question is how, when was, how did we get away from that practice and why does it kind of fall by the wayside to where we're kind of no longer doing that? Uh, it, actually, I mean, well, we have a five-year capital plan, and that gets updated every year. And it's input from the department heads. We had an intern from Suffolk University a couple of years ago that put together uh, a five-year plan regarding all of the departments and all that. So that was a project that an intern from Suffolk University, a grad student, did. Um, we we're trying to work with Bridgewater State, uh, their MPA program, to get another intern to upgrade what our intern from Suffolk University did a couple of years ago. Um, now, as far as the overall vision in the town, we've had two strategic planning retreats since I've been here, one at Bridgewater State 
in one of the federal country clubs. And I think it would be prudent for advisory and uh, the board of selectmen. Um, and it's not going to be free. I mean, you're going to have to hire somebody, whether it's Suffolk University, like we did at Harvard Country Club, or <coughs> Victor DeSantis, that was a professor at Bridgewater State, who's now over in Pennsylvania. So, um, you know, we would behoove us to, you know, contact uh, somebody that specializes in those and, and do a, another strategic planning retreat. I think the one we did at uh, the Country Club is about five, four years old. And I think and, and it, I think it's time, for, obviously, for another one. That it's going to cost a little bit of money. But. That was town wide. Correct. But I would, I would think, I mean, that's a great, great idea, and I think that would be money well spent because if there's not like an ongoing strategic plan, then, you know, what's what's really happening? It's, you know, because the plan kind of changes all the time. You can't kind of do it five years ago, and then, you know, it's things happen. It's very, um, it's a very uncertain world we live in, so it's something that we kind of have to have ongoing. Um, and it, another thing that I, I spoke with Ed about this, that, um, you know, the Department of Revenue came in, and I think it's... Uh, about the town government study committee a few times. Um, I was interested in the board's um, views on kind of going down the route of establishing a town charter. Because um, I think a, a lot of kind of the, what I've solicited is people telling me that um, would make you know, the town government stronger and be in a position to kind of plan better, would to kind of get that a town manager position um, where um, there's kind of one cohesive vision being set at the top and kind of spreading out throughout the departments in the town rather than, um, you know, I know it's, I, we, we've strengthened Ed's role in the past few years, um, and I think you guys have your vision of the town, and then there are a lot of other departments too that it just doesn't seem that everything's kind of melding together and kind of strengthening that town manager position. Um, I think would put the town in a much better position um, to kind of strategically lay out a vision going forward. Um, so I was just, I'd never had spoken to any of you about this, I spoke to Ed about it, and I was just curious as to what um, the board thought about kind of, you know, stepping on the gas and really taking something like that seriously. Yeah, uh, sure. We have the Town Government Study Committee that was formed about a year and a half ago, and we had a couple of meetings in the beginning, uh, did a lot of energy and ideas, and then uh, the interest waned. And we went about a calendar year without uh, being able to get a quorum. And it just so happens we had our, uh, our first meeting in that time uh, just about a week ago. So we're starting to gear up again. And one of the key things that we're looking into is should the town have a town manager and a, and a town charter? And uh, just for, for everyone's information out there, if they don't know, uh, the town charter uh, just delineates uh, your bylaw, what your bylaws are, and categorizes them. It, it's the town manager position that would change the way the government works in town. And it, it doesn't have to be a town manager in name. You know, they could also have the same uh, strength of position and duties as a strong town manager. You don't necessarily have to change the title to get the same effect. Sure. Uh, we did try, uh, call it four years ago or so. Uh, we had a vote on town meeting for a town manager, and it went down in flames. The town was not ready for it. And uh, our town government study committee that's been, you know, uh, dipping our toes in the water, looking, looking and researching at this point right now. Uh, we're, we're way too soon to actually bring it to the town for a vote, but we have been gathering a lot of research on it, and we hope to come, come for the town with uh, updated information that's not stale from four years ago. One of the problems. One of the problems uh, with the town manager at that town meeting vote uh, was well, there were a couple of other issues. It, the, the key hang up was that the, the, they didn't bring people that advocated for the town manager, didn't bring a, a job description, and that's what they hung their hat on. Uh, but the real issues were there were some stodgy people that did not want to change in government. And then, frankly, there was a personality conflict with uh, the heir apparent, which was probably going to be at the door. So they were like, it's, I don't want to put out a town manager. And that's, frankly, <coughs> that's, that was the case then. Uh, so we have been looking into it. It deserves looking into it even further. Uh, so is there anything else about uh, town charter? Yeah, so I mean, I've spoken, I reached out to um, 
Bill Keegan, who's a, I think he's the town manager in Foxborough, um, and I talked to him about it. Um, and he is also on the form of government committee for Mass Municipal. And he said they'd be happy to kind of send some people here um, and talk to the townspeople or talk to us about um, their experiences and, and other towns that have kind of gone through this process and kind of getting buy in from the townspeople. So um, I'd be happy to help out. What was his name again? Sorry. Bill Keegan, I think he used to be a town manager in Denham and now he's the town manager in Foxborough. Okay. Was, uh, the, the town government study committee uh, had uh, a fellow, his name escapes me, but I believe he's the, the town um, manager in, in Taunton. And he came and uh, gave a presentation on, on town charters and, and town manager and former government. So uh, there are some folks looking at it. And one of the things we need to do is uh, uh, throw out a wide net, get more people to look at it at once. And those, the cash management committee that was mentioned, I think those work brilliantly. In the past, and we did get away from it probably for three years now. Three years ago, we, we had one. I, I remember, but it was just meet and greet. We didn't we didn't set any policy. Well, it's the board. I think selects you know the, the issue of there will be a committee. I mean, there will be a cash management meeting, and I think there is in the bylaws or standing rooms or what have you. Is a list of the attendees for that, and I think it's just a matter of getting, you know, bringing that up again and trying to get a convenient time and place. Yeah, because if all of you folks being here asking for this uh, uh, this information is right, the selectmen have uh, been lax in doing that. We, we should have a, a clear plan for the future that's uh, that can be laid out on the table at any time. Now, we all know that it changes. That's one of the reasons that the cash management committee was just fell by the wayside. Getting hit with budget cuts, budget cuts, and then a big contract comes up and you're just strapped for cash. And, and, and you feel every time you plan, something comes up and, and it just destroys the plan. So it got frustrating for a lot of people. That's destroyed. It's just, I mean, no plan is going to be set in stone. That's yeah. right. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a wavy line on where you want to get to go. But, you know, you were right. That's, that's why it's important to plan, right? It's not, the plan isn't important to how you kind of react and change course as you get there. So. Sure, sure. And you know, it's, a, it's, it's a point well taken on, on me as a selectman that we should have a plan in place that we can lay down on the table and critique from all the partners. We have new folks, school committee. They're fifty percent of the budget. Yeah, they need to be part of this conversation. Has, has anyone? I, I know it gets department heads together once in a while. There's a conversation of, if you will, wish lists or something. And I think we need to be a little more concrete. I know everybody's got grandiose ideas of what they would like to have, but the real practicality and, and get something going, get buy-in from at least from the town hall and, and you know various areas to see if we can move forward with. Because it, it's it certainly is going to affect all your union contracts and everything else um, as to how you know how we can provide for the uh, quality of life in the town of Pembroke. Sure, that was that was part of the issue of why we you know wanted to just raise the issues um, and, and see where we could get you know some buy-in or something to start down the road. Um, the, the final thing I just wanted to kind of hit on, I, Linda, Linda brought it up a little bit, but um, you kind of get, you know, you get the chicken little reputation when you kind of bring this up, but the Plymouth County Retirement Plan, um, in looking at it, um, there's some very lofty expectations built in there that um, in a current environment, you know, it's not saying that it's going to blow up, but I think the way it, it, it's presented to the town as um, no problem, we're totally funded, um, it could potentially create big problems for the town. So it's something that I, I think that the board should be thinking about. Um, you know, they, they kind of set their uh, an expectation of what that fund is going to return to them, um, and then they kind of base how they're going to be able to pay off that. So it's a very lofty goal right now that they're setting. Um, and I just don't, I think they kind of pass it off as, I have some problems with the way they present that. Right? I think they present a very, um, almost like a best case scenario. And then so people can kind of do a quick look at it and say, hey, we're fine. Um, I, I would prefer them or at least somebody kind of ask questions about, hey, well, what's what's a little less than a best case scenario? What's um, what's the worst case scenario? You know, 
Um, and then that would kind of give us an opportunity to plan, um, you know, because you don't want to plan for the best case scenario. You want to plan for, hey, kind of, this is kind of middle of the road. This is what could happen. Um, and what could happen to the town is if you don't get those best case scenarios out of that fund, then um, the town's going to get hit with a big bill. Um, and that's, um, you know, that's something that, you know, like you talked about, like these big bills come up um, and it kind of hits our plan. So that, that's a pretty big one. Um, and I think a lot of people take, um, Kind of like an ignorance is bliss approach when they look at those pension plans, but it's um, I think we're we're at, we're at a point where it would be um, wise for the town to kind of at least ask the, the board running it some tough questions, or at least kind of plan for not their ideal scenario that they're kind of passing on is what is what we can expect. They're looking for eight percent, which is. Um, Outrageous right, you know, you, we know we know what the what the rate environment is, where you're almost getting zero percent, um, kind of safe safe money. Um, so to, to kind of go out there and say, hey, we expect eight percent, it's it doesn't take you know a, a rocket scientist to, the, to know um, it's got to be pretty tough to get. Right. What is this, the the issue now with the, the health contract? At one point, I think you mentioned that um, the, the towns were looking at maybe some other solution. It, well, I think what happened, and, and, and you know, with Mike behind me, um, you know, we've attended all of the uh, general membership meetings. Um, a lot of the, a lot of bigger communities um, that make up about fifty percent of the total membership. And there's about eight of us that make up over fifty percent. <coughs> we don't feel that the management of the funds uh, are. Uh, Responsible enough to the general membership, the fact that over the years, um, the uh, Plymouth County Steering, excuse me, Mayflower Group Steering Committee thought that more was better, and so we brought in some communities and some fire districts. Um, we uh, have this uh, one unit, one vote rule right now, which across the eight major cities. Um, what is that? So, so, okay. like the so we got uh, a fire exactly district right. in, in Dartmouth, for instance, that has two members, and they have a vote. Pembroke is the fourth largest unit in the Mayflower Health Group, and I have one vote. You know, we have over 640 people that are active in the plan, you know, uh, and you go as high as Hingham with 800. So the yeah. equity of the voting, absolutely, no, you know, because equation, most yeah. obviously most of the larger communities have professional managers, and so we look at the way that they are doing the, um, you know, their their scheduling uh, as far as when they meet, um, you know, what kind of uh, programs they're offering. The fact that a lot of communities did not do what this board of selectmen did four years ago and adopt the Health Reform Act. Um, so that would allow us to negotiate with what is known as a, a uh, public employees, it's a PDF, and I can't remember what the, the final word is in that. But anyway, it's a, it's a committee made up of representatives of each union, including all school department unions, and uh, you know, to negotiate new health plans. Uh, and we were able to uh, eliminate the most expensive of the health plans uh, through negotiating with the unions. And uh, several towns did not do that. Their elected uh, boards chose uh, not to fight the bullet and uh, negotiate with the unions regarding getting rid of the pricier plans. So those are issues that about eight towns have right now with the Mayflower Health Group. And uh, so we're looking at trying to attend steering committee meetings um, to uh, voice you know our uh, our opinions to them um, and we're talking about some people that are well versed in the health insurance business and uh, we would like to have uh, a better a better seat at the table and um, we're hoping that uh, you know we got out of Plymouth County Plymouth County well we shouldn't say we got out of it the, the whole Plymouth County Coalition, so to speak, uh, kind of disbanding to form a, uh, a joint purchase group uh, under uh, 30, 32B, which is the health insurance um, <coughs> statute. 
And uh, so, you know, we've been working on that because we, we feel that, uh, you know, going uh, zero, 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 and then 15 uh, isn't something that towns our size, you know, could readily budge. I mean, that was a major increase to us. Like, what was it, 800,000, pretty much, that, that our increase was for this year. Um, so, and, I, and I think that uh, to get to the point <coughs> Uh, that Linda made earlier about uh, union contracts with uh, uh, employee contributions, and, and, and that's a high priority of the board of <coughs> to the bargaining table. Uh, actually, the, we're in current negotiations with <coughs> one, two, and three as we speak. In our uh, first union negotiations with one of the unions, so one. Uh, I, well, you're unable to answer what other issues um, that if we should, we would be asking for any concessions from the unions on issues because they're always usually asking for additions. Are we asking for any subtractions? Yeah, I think the board uh, <laughs> herself, uh, you know, we've reached a consensus that um, you know that we've been uh, generous over the years, and uh, I think. Uh, it's, Maybe time for the unions to give back some of them, which I mean, health insurance is, is, is certainly a, a, a big nut to crack right there. Does anybody else from the town on the board have any questions or anything they want? I, I, just, I just have one. I, I think it's, it's low hanging fruit. Okay. 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 It's not during the lecture. And that's to ask the departments to research grants and other ways for the state. To reimburse us, and you know, the police department did it for I believe the dare officer. I can't remember. The, or like, it was the uh, bulletproof vests. Uh, they got a fifty percent cut on what they asked for. And I think before anybody comes to um, you guys or the, the advisory committee, they should have to go through some certain steps um, to prove their claim um, instead of just coming up and asking for the you know, funds. You know, there should be two or three steps that are taken. One of them would be. Have you applied for a grant for this particular you know, piece of money that you're asking for first? And if you haven't, you know, why not? Uh, you know, we talked about grant writers within the board um, throughout, you know, throughout last year. Uh, you know, that may or may not be a, um, an avenue, uh, but you know, it's not that difficult to fill out a form, right? So I think some simple steps like that really help us in evaluating whether or not a particular department is, you know, I shouldn't say deserve it, but you know, it is, you know, is, is really gone through the merits to ask for money from the town's people prior to asking the town people. We also had picked around quite a bit a town plan, which we had in the past, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, we left town and then we decided that we couldn't afford to replace him, I think. But some of that might be money worth spent to get somebody that would be willing to plan and to do grants. And uh, because from what I gather, they're out, they're out there, they're, they're all over the place. And all it takes is, you know, get the form and a few little questions to ask and fill it in. And um, yeah, I think if I like the fire police and and um, and Ed has done pretty good with grants. But I mean, I know when we um, when we talk to the. Um, People that came in that were interested in the chief job, we that was one of the big things that we were looking for was was uh, what are they doing for grants and things, and um, we found out that one of the firefighters over there had been writing grants on his own time and uh, saved the town uh, like two or three million dollars. Yeah, the well, they've got a couple of them, I guess, yeah. over there. One and, well, I, I think one one of the things that um, as Richard was pointing out, there was there was actually one town department that came to us and they wanted some money uh, for a specific thing. And um, we told them, the state has grant money for that, and Pembroke is actually mentioned as being eligible. Have you even tried it? And their response was, we'll find a way to spend it, get it out of our budget. So they, they didn't even want to fill out a single page to yeah. get the money from the state. They're spending the tax dollars from here rather yeah. than doing that. And that's kind of frustrating. I mean, you know, yeah. that everyone's always coming saying they need more money, and then 
they well, don't want to go and get it. I think like the, the I think like the Weymouth I think it was the Weymouth PD hired a guy just to do grants. That's, yeah. that's just what his job was. Yeah, I don't and know what it would cost the town to have he a He saved grant. saved the town yeah, a ton of ton of money. Couple things. Number one, uh, they, the fire department and the police department really get awarded a number of grants each year. And so I think it would be, I'll, I'll mention to both chiefs that we would like them to publicize those grants that they get, because they get them all the time. I mean, the whole 911 thing is being run, you know, on a grant. Um, you know, Homeland Security has provided the fire department with a number of grants. But it's all, you know, it, within their department and they don't publicize it. So I think it would be uh, prudent on behalf of those two departments to let the Board of Selectmen and Advisory know that they get these grants, because they really do every year. Um, and to your point about planner, um, I believe the planning board's planner assistant who has an advanced degree in urban planning starts today. Actually, I believe that they are at the planning board meeting tonight. I, I think that it's one thing is to find out where these grants are and how to look, get them. And I mean, I'm going to show there are a lot of them that uh, either aren't worth going after. But if you don't know that they're there, you don't know enough to go after them. And I think, you know, we need a source to tap into to, to at least provide us with the potentials that's out there. There's a lot of money out there. A lot of, a lot of money leaves the town's pockets, goes to the state. So it's, it makes sense to try to claw back as much as possible. It, it's, it's not just it's not just grants. And, uh, <coughs> Steve had brought to the uh, DPW that there's a lot of surplus equipment that the state puts out there, dirt cheap. For uh, um, all you have to do is pick it up. Basically, all you have to do is pick it up. And um, we convinced the DPW it was a good thing. They said we just need some money. We fronted them an extra fifteen thousand into their budget, so that when these things came up. They, they couldn't go out there and say, get a $12,000 trailer for $1,000, you know, and things like that. Pick it up and it's done. So, you know, there are other things. That, and obviously, it's it's much to our benefit to do this. So we're really willing to work with the departments to try and create this. As well as some accountability to that example. Um, so we gave them 15 grand. Well, show us you saved us. Show us you saved us 30 grand. But they, they did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they no, saved no, a lot of money. Good. Yeah, but just to keep that roll, I mean, that's, you know, that's fine. But you know, accountability is fine. I think one of the biggest things that the town departments themselves need out there is the community preservation plan. I mean, you have a playground over here from the community center that should be rebuilt, to, and you know, the money is there. That's one thing that happens. A big savings account in the community preservation. But each town department should have a list. Things that you know, we're working with the community preservation. So we're using that money for town buildings, and we're making the center of town improvements, uh, whatever that may be. You know, putting uh, benches or sidewalks, whatever it is. It's all part of community preservation. And you know, every time we go to town meeting, probably about four or five things. Uh, maybe probably keep transferring more, more money into the savings account. So uh, the town departments at the same time. Hey, you want to put a you know, new front on the building? Yeah. Uh, the cemetery uh, needs some defenses, and some of it, but I think they really have to step up and some of that revenue. And uh, some of the other thoughts, uh, my thoughts, are, you know, uh, consolidated purchasing. You can save some money there between the school department, the town hall, and all these offices, and WB Mason contract. We would probably ask for a large volume discount. Same thing, everyone out there is running a different type of uh, copy machine in every building between the schools and town hall and the fire station. Consolidate all that purchasing. And have one contract, one maintenance contract for all those buildings. We just negotiated a, a waste contract for the town. Well, the town's using one waste contractor and the school department using another waste contract. You know, some of these things that we talked about, it's been talked about but since I've been on the board as far as a finance system for accounting. So we print out the reports and print out where our money is. We're still talking about it. It's on the DOI report. Uh, I think it's, it's time that uh, you know, we take a look at a lot of things as far as I weekly payroll, uh, as far as what gets deducted. 
Well, we said that years ago. <laughs> I said that years ago because it, it's uh, all town employees should have the same major benefits. They, they really should. And in order to get them to get those major benefits, you have to negotiate it. And and uh, sometimes that's more difficult than what it seems to, to negotiate that. But but you're right. They, they should. I mean, if they're town of Pembroke employees, they should all get the same major benefit. And then whatever department they're in, then they get their whatever benefits that they get from their department. And I agree with that 100%. That's, you know, but in order to get that to work, I, I don't really know how to do it because I've been negotiating with a lot of the, the different, different groups and they all say the same thing. Well, you gave the fire department 3% last year. And we only got 2%, and now we want 4%. And then you talk to the DBW, and they say the same thing. I we want the same to, thing as the police got. And, you got to start someplace. You, yeah. you start with, with one, the contract, and say, look, this is all we can afford to pay. And if the next one comes along, you say, look, this is it. Unless you want to give up Problem is, you, problem you is want you, to give up, we'll consider. The problem is you can't say that in negotiations. You want to be able to start from scratch in a negotiation. Because it's then a you, negotiation. Then you, then you're not you're not bargaining in good faith. You are if you don't have the money and if you're trying to say you want to be fair to everybody, I don't yeah. know how they fit to be considered under their labor practice. And and maybe I hate to say it, but maybe it's time to bite the bullet and, and risk that. Uh, <coughs> I hate to see some of these things go to arbitrators because they're never favorable to anybody but the the union, but maybe it's time to <laughs> Bring it up. And not to, to harm it at this point, but you know, again, our, our legal representation should be you know, acting on our behalf, right? They well, do. They are, yeah, they do. They with us at all yeah. times. But then I just heard that yeah. we can't, you know, we can't have those conversations. We can't. It's, this is a municipality, but not a private entity. It's, it's they have the upper hand. So our, I guess the. But we do. But let's make no mistake because it's being. It, it, I don't want anyone to think. But we don't go there and demand the best and the lowest. But <coughs> the starting point, just like you said, it's, it's low, and then, then it's negotiation. But we can't go there and and put down, say, zero, for example, on the table, say, that's all we can afford, and, and walk away. It, 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 so. I, I guess what I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm trying to say, it's it's not it's it's difficult under state law to negotiate as a municipality, first of all, and then you add on top of that uh, these personalities involved, and then add another layer to that, where we want our employees uh, to be happy and productive, so and, and to make a living, so we have we have all these balls that we're juggling, but we do go there trying to get the best deal for the town every negotiation. And you know, I can't say too much more because we're in active negotiations now. Right. But That's the philosophy. To, okay, but we ought to be able to benchmark against other well, towns, either our competition, either our local towns. Well we, we, we do that also. There's actually a list that, that that either the police or the fire or whatever goes by and we go by that you get comparable towns. So they get ten or fifteen comparable towns as you know the same population and the same fire and police or whatever and what they're making and they come back with statistics and say listen this is this is what comparable towns everybody in these towns this is what they're getting for pay and we're getting this but right. at, at, at that point you ought to be able to bring up but we give you this that and the other thing so that right. balances out a little bit here a little a little bit there well, I mean, every, everything you're saying we do okay. so so we don't we don't go there with our uh, our tail between our legs and say we would have got one. I don't believe 
that's good to hear. Well, that's encouraging. I, I think that's more than we knew. Well, the, before it, you know, it's the same thing. I've been on both sides. I've, I've done the negotiating and on the police contracts coming in and fighting for every dime I could get, and I want my birthday off. And those are wish lists, and we know those are wish lists. And and then when when uh, when you come down to the hard negotiations, a lot of times we end up in Boston. And we're traveling to Boston, talking to a negotiator in Boston. Uh, either that, or they may come down here if we're lucky. But and then the state tells you what just about what you're going to give them or what you're not going to give them, and that's the way it works out. But yeah, the financial uh, wants aren't always offset by the political realities. That's, Absolutely, but yeah. but I think we have to impress upon at least we should make it very clear to the townspeople. Um, what you can say about a contract negotiation that, you know, we try to get the best and, and get as specific as you can because I think some people would be, be very surprised at, you know, we're, we're 30 miles from the, the town of uh, the city of Boston, yet some of our salaries are comparable to Boston. These people don't have to go anywhere. They come... You know, they don't have any transportation. They don't have to get up early. They don't. A lot of, of things that I think matter to, to the townspeople, and I think they should, you know, be aware of it. I hate to call this meeting short because we have the school committee here, and they've been scheduled. But I think this has been very productive, and I want to thank the advisory board for coming here. Now, when we review the minutes of this meeting, we're going to be getting back together again and further discuss some things and maybe set up a committee or two if that's possible because I, I think everything fine with, with us uh, i think everything that's been said here tonight should have been said and I, I it's all taken very seriously and i think this board agrees with you that uh we've got some trouble times ahead we have we have more job. things to do than we can afford to do so it's thank you very much <laughs> Just one thing, I think this is a good start, but I think that we should do this on some sort of regular basis, at least a couple times a year. Um, okay. We really need to, to maintain the, uh, the dialogue. Well, I think I can speak for the board and agree yeah. with that Absolutely. suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> I think that's gems. <laughs> okay, Mike, how are you? Fine yourself. All right. Sorry, sorry for the delay, but that's okay. I think you know it was a interesting to hear a good chunk of that discussion because it's somewhat ironic they're here. They were here for some of the same concerns we were. Right. Um, and with the with, you know trying not to rehash what we just discussed over the past forty or so minutes, um, we had this similar discussion. I think back in about the March time frame when we were hit with as a as a community. Um, what Ed, you talked about with the increase that we had in, on the health insurance side, which, which threw the whole budget in a little bit, uh, turned it a little bit sideways. At the time, we were focusing on expenses, and I think we came to a to a reasonable compromise as, as a community to, to, for, for a budget. But at that time, uh, Patrick, during uh, one of the times he was speaking, brought up, and I think we all agree, that there's a need not just to look at the expense side of the ledger. Um, it's really the, the, what else can we focus on the revenue side? It's, if we just keep trying to solve it as an expense problem, which is what we were doing for so many years, we end up in a situation where it just becomes almost, it becomes almost too difficult to maintain and sustain. So we, we're we here tonight, um, I guess somewhat similar to what the, our advisory colleagues before us, to see what could we do to get the discussion started to talk about what we, could we come up with for sustainable revenue increase the, the town revenue sources 
outside of the, the, the tax base? What are the alternative methods? I heard grants mentioned earlier. It's something I you know we look look for a lot um, as a district. The number of opportunities for us is starting to reduce uh, fairly significantly because the, the sources of those grants, uh, generally state, federal government, they pull back on what they've allowed or what they've given. And the other part we have is our, our demographics. So we don't qualify for a lot of the grants that you'll hear when the governor does the state or the state address or the, the state of the union. They talk about you know putting money towards education or early intervention. A lot of those don't fit a community like ours. So we're limited in where we can go for revenue. But what we wanted to do is start a joint discussion with the folks here, um, plus any of the other committees. Definitely, I think advisory would be one uh, that should be at the table. How do we generate more sustainable revenue for the town outside the tax? So, yes, no, I, I think at the end of the day, um, we as a subset of a team. Right, have to come together to be able to really understand what is our revenue strategy. And then building on that, really, in order to understand what the revenue strategy is, is what is the expense baseline and what is the expense strategy going out in a year, two years, now, maybe three years. I really don't think anything past three years is, is really worth a whole heck of a lot right now. But it became very clear as we came to talk to you guys a couple months ago that we continue year after year after year to basically roll our numbers forward and balance the budget based on expense cuts. And that works for so long. But at the end of the day, it's about cash flow and understanding what is our current cash flow position, what are our major sources of cash and of, of revenue, and how to your point to either organically build those or to take other steps outside of just sort of the base that you know that's going to organically build those actually grow our revenue base and it would make sense or it would seem to make sense to have a small team come together um, that's representative of town government in order to put together a strategy on both the expense and the revenue side so what we're asking really you guys if you would consider forming that team a couple members from the Brooklyn Board of Selectmen a couple members of the school committee, a couple of town departments that are across representation of government to be able to, to put that strategy together as we go to the budget cycle. As we, as we look at it, you, know, you, you need to grab all the branches, planning, to kind of see what's coming into the town, especially on the real, on the commercial base, you know, whether it would be assessors to understand how we compare business-wise versus other towns. You know, there's there's other, or um, there's all sorts of ways we need to hit this besides just saying, okay, we have a tax base, that's where we should go. We have to come up with the alternative sources, which everybody always talks about. Yes, that that will stop it. Thoughts? Thoughts? I think, I think one of the things that, that you'll probably find that I've found over the years in Pembroke is that Pembroke has been um, pretty much, um, not lately to say, but over the years past, that been very anti-business and we're, we're only seeing business coming into town now into some of the locations up in North Pembroke or whatever you know to come in and you look at Hanover and I mean who wants who wants to live in Hanover on Route 53 because but you look at their revenue as far as is the money that they get coming in from all these different businesses is so much more than Pembroke um, and, it, and it, they have that to work with you know it's it's a uh, so the homeowner is not, I mean, the only other way you can do that is split the tax. We talked about that uh, a few times, uh, about splitting the tax and making the, the businesses pay more. You make them pay more, and they're going to go someplace else. So so you're going to lose them. So the discussion pre-Porta, you know, the strip all the water, is that what Dennis Uber wanted? Right. That location, we had to change zoning bylaws. I remember one of the arguments was they didn't want that stretch of 139 uh, right to be the auto mile. Be the yeah, auto mile. Right. And, yeah. and you know, and, and, I, and I completely understand it. Get it? It makes all sense. It's really strike the balance between being business friendly, but also <coughs> you know the community and, and do take it full advantage of the areas where we can without making you know traffic nightmares and, and changing the the, yeah. the, the, um, the complexion of, of what we are. But you know, what, what struck me about the conversation that I just listened to, um, and what we hear a lot of things is, we've all been in town for a long time, right? And we, we tend to rely on anecdotal evidence. 
and we go, that's about I heard this, or I saw this, or this is what you used to do. I think it's really important that we forget that. Yeah. We've got to come together as leaders in this community and once and for all develop a set strategy, right? And we have to be able to say, our expense based on is X. And in order to afford that expense based on, we have to generate revenue as a Y. And then we have to start to look at the list of ability to do that and inability to do that to begin to drive some key strategic decisions on what can be afforded and can't, on where our priorities are and where they don't, and they really have that list of eight. If we did get more money, these are the priorities of the town. It's not of a department, but of a town. And if we had to go back the other way and make a reduction, these are the priorities of the town. And the only way to do that, I think, is with a cross section of government coming together. But we have to have a set deliverable, we have to have a set goal, we have to have a set timeline, and be able to implement something for the budget season. Matthew, yes. Well, first of all, I say thank you for coming in. It's not even cool. I agree with your concern. I'm concerned about the former advisory board that not only is an expense problem, it's a revenue problem as well. And that, as my colleague Mr. said earlier, we missed the opportunity to bring in some new businesses, but there's always more opportunity to bring in new businesses that help foster innovation and entrepreneurship in Pembroke. I have some uh, items that I'll discuss later to do just that. But it also in preparation for uh, you guys coming in, I've designed a potential program to help raise some revenue. I wanted to get your thoughts and thoughts of the board as well, uh, if you want to hear it. Uh, I think we should implement some sort of auction night that potentially every year you have, say, one night in people bid, you have their names associated with the department of the school. For example, if Joe Smith, Joe Smith donates thousand dollars to the school it could be the Joe Smith field for the year. For the meeting rights. For meeting rights, exactly. Yeah. And that can help generate some revenue. Well and I think that's it's those types of things that we need to really talk about widely on a committee like this because to your point, right? Something very straightforward, very simple, understand what can be done under state law, right? What can be done under local ordinance and then what made sense, right? I think you know things like that are it, absolutely are, would, would go on the list. And it's a great way of building revenue from bases outside of the tax base. Because it's not always an overrider. It's not always putting the burden back to the taxpayer. It's really first expanding what you can, and I think ideas and thoughts like that, versus you know going there as a last resort. Yeah. And we don't have all the answers, but that's exactly why we would do this. Yeah, that's the point of us coming forward and trying to you know, start the discussion so we can throw all the ideas out there. Because when you get all the ideas and you can prioritize which are the ones that are going to bring, you know, the most value, which are the quickest time to revenue, and then try to come up with what the true prioritization comes up to. What does it take to execute, right? So there's, there's certain pieces, okay, yep, this is low revenue, but it also is a lot more work than, than something like this. So until we have that discussion, I think, collectively, then, it makes it difficult for one department to just kind of carry and push it. You know, I guess some of those things are in our control, but we're trying to stay away from these. We're trying to stay away from any other things that put a burden on the consumer of the school resources. So I think that, that I think we've got a great idea. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, this is fortuitous. Uh, you folks coming in here for essentially the same reason uh, the advisory committee did. Point is well taken, uh, both from them and from you. And I think the board of selectmen uh, should, should jump right in. Please speak first and embrace uh, the ideas getting together. Um, why we got away from the, the cash management committee that was um, at a lower key, uh, essentially doing uh, what you proposed. Uh, and the board of selectmen have over the, over the years, not just the board of selectmen, but the town, has pecked away at ideas like that. Um, the meals tax, for instance, to, to gain revenue, or the Community Preservation Act uh, to, to, to gain revenue for certain aspects. Uh, but to have a comprehensive vision for the next three years is something that uh, is, is needed. And uh, I think you're right, three years is enough. But to go on any further, it makes you change the so, contract so quickly. Right. <laughs> contract, <laughs> contract, <laughs> contract <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that yeah. makes even more sense. So I, I think this board of selectmen uh, should get together with, with uh, 
the school committee advisory and other important uh, committees in town. And we, in the past, Ed was mentioning it earlier, uh, we had the two retreats to do uh, the, the somewhat what you were proposing. Uh, but I don't think it's been the, the three year uh, master plan or uh, master capital plan that, that you speak of. And, and I think that's something that should be done because it's a task that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah. That can be determined with a, with a small committee. Yeah, and I, I'm going to stress the, the concept of small because you and I, and, and Mike, actually, most of you guys here, we sat in a lot of those nights. We were together for three or four hours, right? Upstairs in a conference room with cash management. And a lot gets thrown out, and it's good stuff, right? But we're not executing. And part of it is just too many people. And you can't have half the advisory committee, half the board of staff, and half the school committee, police chief, fire chief, this person. All of a sudden, you have 20 people that you're trying to grow. I mean, this, I think, has to be a really thoughtful cross section with probably no more than eight people that, that really tackle this. And the whole idea is we're doing it for the town, right? You know, and it's we would report back, right? The idea of the committee would be that we would bring here, you know, updates. There are deliverable dates, there would be timelines, there would be status reporting, do a project manager's thing to death. Make sure that over the next three or four months, we're bringing in a result. It's going to be some work. I mean, it's really going to be some work, but I think it's well worth it. If, if you look at our timing, there's, say, yeah, we probably have a little bit of time to get going, but if you look at when the first pieces of the budget come together in December, that's about five months away. Um, before we start, actually, four if you consider we're, at, we're almost at August 1st when people start putting in their first drafts of the budget. I know the Aaron and the administration start working on it sometime in mid October to start preparing for what the next year looks like. So, you know, which is the next one. <laughs> the, the, the point is, we really need to be into September starting to come up with the ideas. So, in October, that's where the plan comes together so that you can get to November and execute. Otherwise, you potentially lose a fiscal cycle because you can't put those monies into the budget and then therefore they can't be included into the, what, what the department's debt. I'm not saying that year one would be a huge windfall, but at least if we get some of the, the you know, low hanging fruit dollars in, but then also put up a longer term plan for two or three That's if, there, if there is a large plan or project. I know that. We, we talked about, I mean, years ago, we were talking, okay, what else could be in that corporate park area, things like that, what else can drive, because those tend to be the bigger tickets. I think the last big ticket item we've seen was either the center or Lowe's. Um, not that we want a lot of those types of things, but we need our share of them to, to try and drive where we're heading. Ed? Well, I echo gentlemen's idea about the committee, because cash management was too unwieldy. And we had too many players that, that were just there for whatever reason. For their own, per <laughs> for their own personal so, selfish reasons. And, and, and so a number of eight people would be great because six of the eight are here right now. Two school committee members, Mr. Buckley and myself, two selectmen, and then you would pick two other folks at large or from departments or maybe the school department, whatever, Aaron, you know, Rope her into it, and uh, maybe another Very part. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think I think I think eight's fine. You know, I, uh, anything more than that, I concur, would be too unwieldy. Um, and I think that the board, uh, you know, would be great if the board, you know, voted to form a committee. You know, we'll yeah. give it some kind of title, but. Yeah, we need to figure that out. I mean, our first, the first order of business would be to bring back, would be to bring back to you because to me, this committee reports to you. We are the leaders of this town and, and of this government. We would bring back to you a charter, you know, a set of dates and a set of deliverable dates, and really sort of a, a measurement of success. Because I think you need that. Right? I mean, I think you can it has to have a time when it has to go with actual items at the end. If not, it's not successful. And then we with the actual items, it has to be how it's going to get executed. Because if it just relies on the folks there, I mean, with, you know, out of the people you spoke about, only a few of those folks are full-time employees of the town. The rest of us are doing this um, on a full-time role. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Depends on the day, I guess. 
Uh, so we would have to then make sure we lay out, lay it, down, lay down the groundwork so it can be executed by some by somebody within the team. Um, so that's, without that, we can't. I would, would suggest that uh, part of that would one of the members probably somebody with planning experience because I know a lot of the times we talk about well could we do this here or this there and we have to look at potentially changing you know a bylaw or that has to happen in order to without that knowledge without that knowledge you can come forth with a plan and then all of a sudden realize it's it's not not you know Mike that brings up a, a point from the strategic planning retreat at Bridgewater State I don't know 12 13 years ago and one of the things came out of it was <coughs> to make our zoning bylaws a little bit more business friendly. And one of the suggestions was adding a floor to, I think maybe at the time you couldn't have a building over three stories. And I think we might have changed it to five stories, something like that, which, you know, made development, you know, a little bit more practical for, for, the, for the private sector. So things like that, you know, can come up so... Might be the fact that the, the new planning assistant that has, like I said, advanced degrees in urban planning could sit at the table. Or, and, and also, if the, if the person doesn't have to be on the committee, you would say, all right, exactly right. tonight we're going to talk exactly about right. planning. It's exactly and right. And you bring in that person. It's exactly right. To meet with the well, committee. That's right, so. that's, and that's how you're pulled it to key exactly. or nine or whatever the number is. So. The, the bottom line is making sure we have the experts available for that. So we're not going to have all the answers. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. right. We're going to spit all a bunch of ideas and then out of those come up with something that's, that's relevant. Arthur? Yeah, before you came in, we had talked about um, other revenue streams and uh, leasing land that we bought um, up on Route 53, you know, potentially putting in a um, you know, a law office or a bank or something along those lines, something that would, you know, generate a lease fee for, you know, all time. But I think um, to Matthew's uh, suggestion, to look at the naming rights, you know, if you want to uh, call it that, that I've been off the school committee for about 15 years, but it was a time, and, and to his credit, he's digging up, uh, you know, solid information. Um, you could get Coca-Cola to pay for your football scoreboard, yeah. Yeah. and you could get um, you know Gatorade to pay for your um, you know your, your mats for the wrestling team and that kind of thing. And I think he's he's on the right track that yeah. you know there's um, yeah, absolutely. you know money to be found out there. It's going to be the Arthur Boyle's hurt you get any money out of Athens, you're going to be doing good. <laughs> It's like when you watch. Actually, that's a stolen line. There was uh, there were library naming rights that we were saying could be memorial. We had, there were certain pieces that we looked at. We looked at a little bit different well, from trying to solicit advertising rather than doing it that way. And it was going to require somebody to actually go out and physically get it. Something I put together years ago. We looked because we have a lot. You know, kind of going off that there between fiddlers, playgrounds, fields, gyms. You know. Us. And there's lots of things. We actually did look at wrapping the buses at one point. So we had an advertising. Yeah, is that allowed? Uh, certain things are, certain things are. When you talk about the Coca Cola and the scoreboards, but what they used to give the scoreboards for were the rights to allow vending machines within the school. Now, co vending machines aren't allowed in schools anymore. So um, there's certain things that are allowed and certain things that aren't. Help so, but you could you could auction off stuff. Field naming right like that for a year, you'd have to have policy, right? Because you wouldn't want it to be a business that wasn't um, wanting to be associated with the school. We wanted to be associated with that, right? I mean, it's just, but, but it's a great idea in order to raise money. Think of a lot of the DPOs when they run their um, events or whether it's the Pembroke Education Foundation, you know, you'll always see the principal for a day, you know, superintendent, whatever, and, and those get bought a lot. Um, and they, and they raise some, some some nice funds that they can use for their for their use. So anyway, but there are lots of opportunities. I think if we collectively get together on it, we can come up with what what actually fits for the town. It's like when I watch the Red Sox game. Tyro tires are the official tires of the Red Sox. <laughs> Stanley tools are the official tools of the Red Sox. But if you but if you look at that practice model, 
right? Since the ownership took over, they tapped into every possible yeah, revenue source, source far outside of what's on the field. Um, you know, Major League Baseball doesn't have ads on uniforms yet, but every piece of there, every piece of the stadium, every view you see, there's an ad in behind home plate, you know, on the on the on the green monster, right? The two billboards above the monster seats. You go on and on. Players are going to look like NASCAR drivers eventually. Eventually, yeah. But it, which is so, sort of you know European athletes or you know uh, certain you know baseball players in, in some of the, the winter leagues in the islands. But anyway, the the point here is they looked and they tried to capitalize on every revenue stream they could because they had to. I think we're in the same situation, and how we do that is going to be up to us to come. So what do you think? I think it's a good idea. I think some states even have the advertisement on the police cruisers. Depends on what you want to have. We're going to take them in the field. Right. Well, I think we wouldn't be a marijuana farm. Right? <laughs> I think we've kind of come to a consensus that uh, Ed's outlining of a committee of eight people, I think we should proceed with that and uh, come up with some candidates. Would it be possible, and I don't want to push, but if we're going to need a deliverable at, at the end of December, so I am going to push, because as a project manager, heck out of this thing, would it be possible to have a list of candidates, a formal vote, the approval of the committee, and a formal appointment at your next meeting? Two weeks. Yeah, that's yeah. enough time. Yeah. That's probably great. We really appreciate it, guys. We really yeah, appreciate you listening. We do. This is important. Well, obviously important to us in our official capacity, but I think um, also, when uh, look at you know, our group collectively, all five of us, is a lot of years of uh, service to the community, and we want to make sure that uh, there's something there for the long term rather than having to do it. Uh, I'm excited about the prospect. There's, there must be something in the air with uh, the, the school committee, the advisory committee uh, coming down for a, a similar reason, the uh, town government study committee. Uh, subcommittee of the boss uh, just finally met again after a one year hiatus. So there's, there's everyone must be getting an intuitive sense that this town needs uh, needs to move forward. The, the interesting part is when we talked about this a while ago and we agreed to reorganize and we reorganize and we came forward again. Um, I had no idea until I walked in that advisory was in front of us for the same purpose. Otherwise, we were just Good. Thank you for it. coming Thank you. in. Thank you. I just have uh, one one thing before you go. I know uh, you know it's probably under new business, but just catch it before you go. Is um, I have an idea about uh, appointing uh, junior fisheries commissioners, um, and I was going to bring that up to the selectmen um, to talk about that because it was, um, there's some of the youth that are in town that are very interested in. Uh, Either in conservation or, or in fisheries yeah. and things. And uh, just recently, we we went out and uh, cleaned the streams down behind the high school um, in there, and we we got a whole trailer load of uh, uh, bicycles and um, uh, shopping carts and a complete trailer full of trash, you know, out of the streams. Um, and not only the trash, but but all kinds of wood. And uh, debris that was thrown in there so that the kids could cross over. So what we actually did is we cleaned the streams all up really good in that whole area there, and we actually put a bridge in um, for the kids to cross, hoping that that you know that they will use the bridge and not throw the stuff in the streams. Um, so we went you know went a little uh, overboard to try to do that for the kids, hoping that they're not going to do that. But the word out to the parents is that. You know that they have to talk to their kids too about about not filling these streams to make the migration of the fish better. Uh, but I'd like to meet with um, the superintendent or the school committee or whatever, and maybe get up some kind of a program for September um, that we could have some uh, youth that are interested in that to uh, possibly be appointed by the board of selectmen as uh, junior commissioners and. I think it would be a good thing because that they're going to carry it uh, on for the future. That's you know, a lot of us old guys aren't going to be around for forever. But um, you know, it's just I just think that that's an important thing to to have these kids look at all of that stuff because ecology is a big thing. It's it's 
those little fish that come up here and spawn and, and go back down uh, do a lot of things all, all over the United States and all over the world. So it's, it's, uh, it's a, it turns into a big thing. You will sell them on the taste of the herring. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's really, it's, it's a great idea. Yeah. Not really, I think it's fantastic. Do some plugs that I think you could leverage off of it as a high school. I think he's also a real high school principal. Yeah. Uh, who would be great to get him involved because he'd be able to get into the community a lot quicker. Uh, yeah. But there's some groups at the school already I think he would reach out to first and then expand it further. Even if you look at some of the environmental science um, classes that we have, yeah, you bring, you know, kind of bring it directly into that and you know, recruit during the school day for the extracurricular club. Right. I think it's a great idea. I don't know how many kids know that even behind the school they only think everybody thinks of the herring when they think of one spot happens and that's the herring right. they don't look at all the way through it know. goes all the way from Oldham Pond to Furnace Pond to down through the woods and down yes. the avenue and but I did, all the way I, out to the ocean so yeah. I completely agree but I had actually talked to several more about this briefly earlier today and I think my suggestion was almost identical I think maybe getting Mark involved in it's a good connection for the new principal to make with a, a board of selectmen member. Um, but it's also, I think anytime we can get our kids involved in the community, it's yep. So I think maybe connecting you and, and, uh, and our new principal is just oh, the right thing to do. Yeah, we're going to be your information to have a great job. Yes, so that's it. you guys got my number and all that anyway. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I just, just won't talk earlier with this. Yeah. Thank you. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. It's a, it's a good way to get the kids to get further involved in the community. Yeah, and they need the time, so uh, they can, they can get, get their time. They get their hours. Yeah. Well, we can't sell the right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to get in trouble. <laughs> Although the time is just Thanks, guys. Thank you very much for coming. We'll see you. No, no. no. Uh, we You're have not the uh, that easy. chairman of the Board of Health. Did you have any business you wanted to bring before us? Mr. Fine. Oh, oh. Dan was Donna Bagney, chairperson of the Board of Health. He was very kind to offer to come. To our meeting, um, we came at 6:45 to discuss with the board about the new board. Um, I just want to make sure that he is able to come back to the board of selectmen in regards to um, what took place. And also, please feel free to listen to the tape recording as well as uh, the news. Um, it was stated in open meeting, but I think that the selectmen do need to know that um, we have been advised. Um, it was said in front of you as well as at the end of our meeting that um, this is an extremely detached retained council. Um, we're going back to, I think, if I can surmise, to 2007 with some unresolved issues in regards to the way that the Board of Health is being done and that the selectmen, as well as the county administrator, it is against the mass general law that they are involved in the Board of Health in any way, shape, or form. So, again, and I apologize for coming either by email or in person to the Board, but I feel that it is escalated with um, Morgan, it is something that I don't fully understand because I was not a part of the town government or as an elected position back to where this keeps going. Um, I was appointed in 2010, which I believe is the end of that. So I'm looking towards the selectmen as well as 
town council to understand that this was stated several times in our open meeting. Um, where that takes us, I do not know. But I just, after having gone through that meeting, I thought it was important that I made sure not that we wouldn't, but I want to be on record that we need to talk to the board in regards to your thoughts. That's right. I went to the Board of Health today because uh, uh, certain the new member has some, had some open questions and apparently some unresolved issues uh, sending back all the way from when uh, she was an employee at Town Hall. Um, try to discuss, discuss the, the questions that she had and, and, and give her answers. I had, I had answers prepared some of the questions that she's asked in previous meetings, uh, but we'll never get to the crux of what the issue is. Uh, we just keep falling down the same rabbit hole. Uh, with, in the statement that we need to be governed by a state law, we need to run by state law, uh, we've mentioned over and over again, uh, but then asked what state law regarding which issue we just never get to the crux of the matter. But um, I did encourage her to to embrace the fact that she was elected. She'd been trying to get elected for a long time. She finally got elected. I wanted her to embrace that. The voters put her there. Do the job that you were elected to do, uh, to be a board of health member for today and moving forward, not try to uh, dredge up things from the past that really aren't in my opinion, issues. There's, there's a lot of a lot of what I had gathered she had an issue with. It's, it's not an issue to anyone else in the world but her. So it's right now the matter is unresolved. The matters are unresolved. Uh, she did say that she retained counsel. Uh, to what purpose? I don't know. Um, but I left her my phone number, my email address, um, and, and maybe. Uh, over time, some of these things uh, will heal. I don't know. Uh, so we'll find out. It was something that I'm going to sign <coughs> and send her tomorrow, um, which was presented to me right before the beginning of the meeting, which is a letter I believe dated 2007 from the honor, honor the um, judge Paul Dwyer in regards to a situation that happened with a previous um, person who um, theft had been involved or the accusations of that. And um, there are two highlighted points in regards to the fact of how the Board of Health has the ability to Higher and higher um, under Mass General Law. I am curious if the Board of Selectmen can present to me so that I may read a, any type of a Pembroke charter different than, I mean, we have Mass Law, but we also have separate towns, if I understand it correctly, um, to kind of enlighten me because. I can't go back in time because I, I wasn't privy to it. Um, I can't um, I can't deal with this issue because I I'm in the wrong rabbit hole. You know, the hole I'm in is the one that's dealing with the people of Pembroke and issues that are facing the town of Pembroke. That we are giving free time to serve, but if we keep going back and can't move forward, then I'm not doing my job as I was elected to do. So. Can I just make a suggestion? Please. Um, I've also talked to this uh, person to some extent, um, you know, over the years from, from way back. And um, <clears throat> some of the concerns were addressed on numerous times over a number of years. And, um, none of these came to came to light, came to truth. 
So if she's got a problem, I don't think she should be discussing it with the board. I think she should be discussing it with the board of selectmen or the red thorn. Um, well, she's not going to get any answers from you or, or from the board. Because I, mean, I keep referring her back. Right. Well, Ed's going to get a hold of town council, and town council will address her concerns. If, if she has a, a particular concern about a past employee or something else that's going on, then I think it's her job to talk to the town administrator and, and possibly have town council take a look at it. But you know what? Town council has looked at those concerns a number of times in the past, and there's been a lot of different concerns that, that were addressed and they're, still, and they're still not resolved, but it's because there was, there was no factual proof of any of it. So she's just beating the horse to death, especially doing that at the Board of Health meetings. It's, it's only a waste of time for her to be there. You know, it's, what she should do is address it with an attorney. If she's got her own attorney, by all means, go to her own attorney and have her attorney talk to the town council and have the, have the both of them talk about whatever the situation is. But uh, yeah, she shouldn't be putting that on on uh, the people at the Board of Health. So, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. So you, you're planning on sending us something from tonight's meeting? Something that whatever re reference that she has correct. rolling back to and, and whatever. And I believe it was written down by Carolyn Murray. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Take care of that. Okay. So I don't have to do that. So nope. that was another piece of the um, uh, several executive sessions that we had um, that I had made as copies as well as minutes of the Board of Health. So um, that kind of completed a package. But I still think that there's a time gap because we go from um, June of 2000 and uh, 9 to a February 1st, 2010. So there's a gap there that I'm a little unclear of. And, you know, I don't mind taking my own free time um, to come in and start reading through minutes of meetings going back to that gap. Um, but there seems to be from when the vote that the selectmen made in 2009 to February 2010, the vote that was in the executive session didn't come on the Board of Health minutes until February 2010. John, I understand. What's, what's the point? No, I saw your conversation. Briefly, you know, we had what two seconds to look at that, mm -hmm. and that's part of the problem with surprise documents on a published right. meeting or a published agenda. Mm -hmm. It's not fair, nobody really has a chance to vet them or thoroughly read them. Right, the brief moment of a glimpse. I didn't see a vote in the ones that were produced. The February 1st of 2010, both boards voted the same night. Board Health and then Board Selectmen voted the same thing the same night. Okay. But that conversation, that, that set of documents that was produced today mm -hmm. from 2009 bears further scrutiny because there's, you know, significant dialogue, but Correct. I don't see a vote in. And there was another accusation that was brought up that um, DM jumped right on um, that, you know, it's just, it's, it's just a little um, concerning. So with that, I appreciate if Dan has it. Sure. Um, I hope that I don't have to come back. I hope that we can move forward. But after this was put to rest, after um, 40 minutes of, of, of discussion, um, we were able to move on with the variances and the issues that we needed to discuss as a um, extremely um, well-versed board. So I was happy to see that that Almost as if we can agree, disagree. Well, I'm glad at least two of you are working in the same direction and working in the best interest of this, the uh, townspeople. Because I, I'll say the same thing I said the first uh, time this reared its uh, head. Um, if you're elected to do the people's business and you don't want to do it, you should resign. And I would call on Gail McSweeney to resign because she's a disruptive influence in a good department that's been run well for the last five or six years. And there's no place for somebody who wants it to be simply disruptive and vindictive. 
Well, as chairman, to you as chairman, my advice would be that you run your meeting according to the approved agenda. And when an, uh, an issue is brought up that is not on the agenda, you have the right not to hear that and to clear that person, if necessary, out of order and no further discussion unless it's on the agenda. And the discussion did ensue because we did have, Dan was there yeah. and questions were... But in the future, in the, future. the next time you meet, you have an agenda. Mm -hmm. That's what your board is has been elected to, to handle, mm -hmm. the, as Arthur says, for the people of Pembroke. Correct. And if that business is not going to be addressed, then that's a real problem. Mm -hmm. And if there's a person causing the problem, they have to be told that they're out of order. And if, if they're going to continue to be out of order, I hate to say this, but you have the right to have them removed. That's always a, a, a last resort. It probably would be better to call a recess mm -hmm. and then maybe talk about it during that. And, and that sometimes will solve the problem. But we can't keep running the Board of Health under all of this issues that has no bearing on what your job is. And maybe the good idea that came out of this tonight, and I thank Dan for taking it on his shoulders to bring forth what he brought forth tonight. I think that was great. And, uh, but now the lady has gone to a lawyer. <coughs> Maybe that's the best thing. Let her, let her fight it with an attorney. The only problem is the town may have to spend money for our attorney. But Where did I hear that get, before? But we got to get the job done with the Board of Health. Yes, we do. And we can certainly recommend that this lady resign if she's not going to do the job that she was elected to do. Unfortunately, we can't force it, but we can recommend it. I don't disagree with Arthur on that. I think that, I, I think that somehow, um, whether it's through legal counsel or it's through a um, group effort, that the um, way that the town of Pembroke as a town is run, governed, and operated needs to be explicitly stated and then leave that as the point of which a discussion can be outside of the runnings and the every day to day issues that we have to deal with. And I don't think until that is stated um, or addressed that this rabbit hole is going to be filled in. And I'm usually a extremely, um, I have the patience of a saint. Um, I try and explain things. If you're not understanding, obviously I'm not explaining them correctly. So I'm obviously not explaining it. But I do not like to raise my voice or get um, out of a professional atmosphere and that's what's been happening. So I guess maybe if there's a charter or there's some way that we can chronologize everything that happened and that it has the blessing and that it's legal and there's no um, unethical runnings of a specific board in the town of Pembroke, if we can show that, then maybe we can put it to rest. That's what I would like to see happen. Yes, and if, uh, it, and if I... If, if you need me to come to a future meeting, I, I can. I'm, I'm willing to do it. Uh, hopefully, it, it can be more productive than it was tonight. Um, you know, I think some of the things I said, I hope she takes back and, and reflects on them and, and comes uh, comes up with what, what her true questions are so that I can answer them. If it's the, the questions are like circular logic, there, there is no answer. I can't help that. But if she has concrete questions, then uh, those can be answered. But she, she, has to, she has to ask the right questions in a way that we can understand what she's asking so, so that we can answer them. And I, I agree with Lou that it's 
is probably the best for everybody uh, in one way. In one way that she got an attorney. Because the attorney will only answer the question that you ask. So she has going to have to find out her questions if she gets an attorney. Um, so it'll be good. that way it'll be black and white and not this gray area that the market is. I also think that if there's issues uh, where attorneys are involved, you don't want to discuss those at a public meeting. Yeah. And I actually questioned the document that was presented because it strictly said confidential use and not to be given out to public uh, right on it. And I did ask if she actually had permission to be able to bring that document forward. And she said yes. So. Um, that was something that was a concern to me, but um, I will go back and I will continue to do the job that I have been doing for the last six years, um, unless otherwise instructed not to. And I thank you very much. Thanks for your patience, Donna. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have another uh, item of business before us which is uh, to consider the acceptance of the property located at 40 Yale Road as a tax possession property at the recommendation of the town treasurer, Kathleen McCarthy. Move the town treasurer's recommendation. Second. A motion by Arthur to accept the recommendation. A second by Bill. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, I declare that five to zero. Uh, we also have an item to address, which is to sign uh, approval of the acceptance of the deed for 190 Barker Street. Move the approval of the acceptance of the deed for 190 Barker. Second. Motion by Apple, second by Bill. Any questions? Here, yeah, seeing none. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, five to zero. Thank you. Uh, any old business anyone would like to bring up? Uh, hearing none, I move to the town administrator's report. I have none, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. You're gonna, not going to tell us about your vacation or anything? No, sir. <laughs> okay. That's why these meetings are taking so long. There's no point. Ah, uh, um, does anyone have anything under Ask the Selectman? I do. Dan. Uh, I was asked by a resident who went before the Board of Assessors um, uh, to, uh, to gather information about, uh, about his request to the Board of Assessors. And uh, uh, there was a, a tax exemption request that was denied. Uh, so I am doing just that. And, uh, Kathy Salmon, our assessor, was uh, kind enough to, to pass me out the public information that she could on it and I'm looking at it right now and uh, I'll get back to that resident once I, I take a look at that information. Uh, I'm just not at a point to give him an answer. Just, uh, yeah, I'll mark time. Thank you, Dan. Anybody else? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next item, which is new business. And I'll ask uh, Selectman Furlong to take this one. Matthew. Thank you very much, Mr. I just want to say, first of all, a favorite fortuitous that people came in tonight to talk about visions for the future of Pembroke, strategic leadership. Because that's what these two initiatives are all about. First of which, environmentalism and the Pembroke initiative really called upon the citizens of Pembroke to bring forth their ideas to solve the environmental issues facing our town, our state, and our country. To bring their ideas forth to the board if they involve if the town, we will consider them involve the same board along to the appropriate people there. And the same thing goes to the country as a whole. And now this, this isn't just a call for ideas, this is a competition, and the winners of which will receive an award from the town. I think it'd be a great opportunity to involve the citizens of Pembroke in town, town lawmaking. And now the second initiative, entrepreneurship of Pembroke, it's a similar uh, idea, but instead of helping the environment about building a business. Now we talk a lot about creating future revenue streams for this town. 
the best way to do this is to foster an innovative and entrepreneurial environment within the youths of Pembroke and not rely upon the existing businesses to come in, hopefully choose Pembroke, but really build a, a culture of entrepreneurship in Pembroke that could make this town be an innovative hub, much like some other towns in Massachusetts are. Now this, uh, this competition will allow for a business to be chosen by a board of volunteers, hopefully uh, assembled in, out of uh, current uh, people on boards and different boards in the town, with the exception of this board, because that might represent a potential conflict of interest. However, the winner will be chosen based upon the merit of the idea, entrepreneurial spirit, and feasibility, and they will receive a award of $1,000 to begin this business, and a coach, and an award as well. And I present these to the board for the first session. Thank you, Matthew. Um, question I had on the building a business competition. Um, would, would this be something that we would need to work with the schools on? Uh, probably, yes. So were you planning on doing that after we discuss this here tonight, if we move forward with this? Are you going to take this forward to the schools? Yes. Can I offer a suggestion that, uh, that Matt go to the next, uh, get on the agenda and go to the next uh, school committee meeting uh, to, to discuss it with those folks uh, so that we can uh, build your plan, your plan model so that it, it fits their system and then uh, come back to the Board of Selectmen and we can, we can uh, vote on something that's going to work. Um, from beginning to end, because uh, if we can vote something tonight on, on the basis of uh, the plan, which, is, which sounds good, fun, and sound, uh, but unless you've already got input from the school committee, uh, things might change. So that way, meet with them first, uh, have a, a complete plan that works within their system, and then we go on. That sounds good to Because it wouldn't be implemented really until now can you give us a little more information on the on the second proposal on the environment and the ecosystems? We're talking about allowing the citizens of Pembroke to take an active role in helping. And that's exactly right. It essentially calls upon the citizens of Pembroke to bring their ideas to the board of selectmen to it. With ideas that you know, these are people closest to the environment, different environments in Pembroke, different ecosystems in Pembroke. If they see something and want an action and change upon it, this is the way to get it done. Hey, Mr. Chairman, yes, I, I want to speak in support of uh, Matthew's uh, proposals. Both of them, I think Dan had uh, been very clear on uh, you know, his thoughts, and I think that they're good. Um, but I think you know, what gave birth to the Pembroke Watershed Association, as an example, is something like this, a group of neighbors getting together and wanting to do something positive. And if you can spawn that with, you know, other organizations or create an organization, you know, my hat's off to you because it's, uh, it's a challenge. But I'm sure, as uh, Dan put it, the useful energy will uh, prevail. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I would suggest that uh, we um, solicit the, the committee first on the town's website. Uh, with the brief synopsis of Matthew's uh, proposal, and that we would set a deadline for, you know, for this committee to be appointed, uh, and, uh, and you know, probably at, the, at two meetings from now, and then uh, we'd have the committee in place, hopefully, and we could announce Matthew's program. On their website, 
you know, with his uh, with his narrative and uh, go from there. But I think the committee would be uh, the beginning, and we could solicit individuals to join that committee. What do you think about that? I feel like All right, that's my dream. Good. Okay. We'll do. I think that sounds like a plan. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Uh, we have some upcoming issues on uh, August 8th. We'll announce the special town meeting date, which will be October 18th, 2016. Also on August 8th, uh, we'll vote to open the special fall town meeting warrant on August 15th, and it will close on August 26th. So here we go again with another town meeting. I forgot about August 11th. What is that? My birthday. Oh! <laughs> I didn't know you were still celebrating it. <laughs> Son of a 39 guy. again. <laughs> 39 again. Uh, we have uh, no need for an executive session uh, tonight. The next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen is on August 8th. And um, the chair when is necessary uh, can also call a special meeting for the right reasons and uh, we'll consider to do so. Does anyone else have anything? Not hearing anything, I'll take adjourn. a motion to adjourn. Motion by Bill. Second. Second by Arthur. All in